Hello, this is Peter. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, whatever you're called, whatever language you're listening in, I'm Peter Stewart. Well, obviously, I'm talking in English, but you may not have English as your first language. Thank you so much indeed for listening. I've done thousands of podcasts over the years for various groups and organisations and various topics. And you know what? This series of short daily podcasts on how to get a better broadcast podcast and voice over voice is probably my favourite. Thanks so much indeed for your support. Preparing a text for audiobook narration. Yeah, that's the topic for today. Since you're reading a really long piece, it's essential to skim the book beforehand. And when you do that, mark unfamiliar words. Check their pronunciation. I mean, imagine a character called um, I don't know, Rome, R-O-M-E, with an apostrophe over the E. Rome Sounds romantic, doesn't he? But because of how your screen is set up, maybe you've recorded the whole book calling him Rome, like the city. Oh, his name appears hundreds of times. You've got to go back and re-record the whole thing. So fantasy and science fiction books will inevitably have invented words and even languages within them. Work out how you're going to say these consistently. I mean, you may be able to contact the author for a steer. Here's a quote from Cheryl Graham on Twitter, which I enjoyed reading very much. The link is in our show notes. Quote, Do you ever hear a typo in an audiobook? I'm listening to a chapter on John Cage and the reader just read... 4 minutes 33 seconds as 4 feet 33 inches. In a different book, in a passage about a 19th century haberdashery established 1887, it actually said est 1887, but the person read it as estimated 1887. Oh, boy, oh boy. Face palm emoji. OK, here's what else you need to do while you're preparing the text. Clearly mark every chapter so you can see where there's a natural pause in the story arc and where you may want to take a physical break. Going to be doing one of those myself in a minute. Mark every new character's first appearance. That way you know whether or not to use their previous voice or if they need a new vocal sound. And highlight character descriptions especially those which give clues as to how they're going to be speaking. Now this could be really specific. It may say something like Tom was South African, or she whined in her nasal voice, but also indirect, because there may be mention of their social economic background, their class, their job, their physical characteristics, such as their size or age and so on. Oh, and beware of new information about a character that emerges during the course of the book, which may and should have influenced their character voice pages and pages and pages before. Fancy getting to the near of the end of the book and it says something like, which reflected her upbringing in Berlin. What? She's, she was, she was brought up in Berlin? I've got to give her a slight German accent. Where did that come from? Or, from smoking 40 a day for the last 40 years. Oh no, I've got to go back and instead of giving her a light voice, I've perhaps got to Give her a more gravelly voice because of that 40-a-day habit. Uh Uh-oh. That shouldn't happen if you read ahead in advance and prepare the text by marking it up. That's today's episode. Tomorrow, post-dialogue attributions in audiobook narration. You didn't know there was so much to this, did you? That, as Get A Better Broadcast podcast and Voice Over Voice continues. From London, I'm Peter Stewart. Bye.